Hello, welcome to my channel Dressmaking Den. My name is Denise and today I'd like to take you through my January and February makes. So if that's something which appeals to you, then please stay tuned. It's been a really busy time for me in the UK uh, as we're still in lockdown and I've been working through my dressmaking plans which is really good I feel like I've made really good progress I've made some really complex garments um, well complex to me anyway um, and I've also made some easy garments too So this was the very first thing I made in January. Um, it's a, an A-line skirt made from a chambray fabric. Um, it's a beautiful fabric from Minerva. I don't think they, they have it in stock anymore. Um, I made it using this pattern, Newlix 6053 View D. I bought a metre of this fabric uh, as I intended to make a top initially uh, but at last minute I decided to make it into a skirt. Um, as I only had a metre it meant that I had to put a seam in the back of the skirt um, which was no big deal really uh, although I think for a, a patterned fabric I think I would have preferred to have that cut on the fold uh, so it's something to remember in future. Um, it's got a, a zip at the side here, just show you, there we go, and it has just a, a simple facing, simple waist facing here, which is interfaced, and this has been top stitched. Now initially I cut this to a size 14, um, which was too big and so I recut it to a size 12 and I have to say it fits perfectly. It was such a lovely, lovely pattern to work with, lovely fabric to work with, and I made it really, really easily. So I'm really pleased with that. So on to the next garment, which was this long line, um, jacket with patch pockets uh, which I made using this pattern uh, which is Vogue 9138. As you can see the jacket is very very different to the one I've made. I lengthened it considerably. I didn't bother with the flat pockets. I thought I would put just some patch pockets on. I just think the whole look looks a lot nicer if it's, if it's nice and flat. Um, and yeah, I love the fabric. The fabric was from Minerva. I believe they've still got it, so I'll post a link down below. And it was just a beautiful fabric to work with. It frayed quite a bit, so I had to overlock it first before I before I put it before I worked with it and put it under the sewing machine. I had to overlock it all the way around the edges just to make sure it wouldn't fray. But yeah, I'm really pleased with this garment. Just one other change I made to the jacket was to add uh, darts in the back of the jacket. It was quite baggy at the back and I really didn't like it. I prefer things that are slightly fitted. Um, so I added a couple of darts. We start from about here down to just the top of the, of the bottom. And I think that makes it look really nice and fitted. The pattern was for an unlined jacket so um, I had to cut out some lining using the existing pattern pieces and retrofit it. This is something that I wouldn't recommend. It was quite fiddly and difficult to do and there was a lot of guesswork involved. So I think if I was going to make this jacket in the future, I would um, buy a pattern which was for a lined jacket rather than an unlined jacket. The other problem I had was the fabric was quite bulky, um, although having said that, it pressed really well with a, a damp muslin cloth. 
The buttonholes proved to be a bit of a challenge. Um, my sewing machine would not just not cope with the bulk and make automatic buttonholes. So I had to do the buttonholes purely manually, which was a bit of a pain, but I got there in the end. And to be honest, I don't think it shows that much anyway. So all in all, I'm really pleased with this jacket. I made this skirt in the same fabric as the jacket um, and I made it using the same pattern, Vogue 9138. The pattern uh, doesn't have lining for the skirt but I retrofitted some lining and that seems to have worked really well. Now this should have been a relatively straightforward make. Uh, but it took me three attempts uh, to get the waistband right. On my first attempt, the waistband felt really, really bulky. And the other problem was the checks along this line here, they weren't straight. I'll, I'll put a photo up so you can see, but they weren't straight. and. I just didn't like it, so the waistband had to come off. Now the problem you've got with this fabric is once you've sewn up, sewn it up, you cannot see where the stitches are. So the only way to do it was just to cut the waistband off and start again. Fortunately, I had enough fabric um, to make another waistband. The second waistband I attempted was um, very similar to the skirt I showed you earlier so it was just a, a facing which was turned over and then you top stitch so I had to go at doing that on this particular skirt and I have to say that was a complete disaster it was just far too bulky at the side seams here it looked ridiculous so I had to take that one off and again I cut it off so this is the third waistband and I had to make this by cutting off the length from the skirt and I had to put a new zip in as well because the zip by that time was quite small um, but I'm really pleased with it now. Um, so, so what I did with this one is um, I just folded it over and instead of turning it under and sewing it I just stitched in the ditch here to catch the back of the waistband in and that's really really so much better. One other change I made to this skirt, uh, on the original pattern it had uh, four darts so it had two darts at the front, two darts at the back. So when I came to putting on the third waistband I decided that I would not put the darts in I would take it in at the sides, take it in at the back, put it on the mannequin and then just see if it needed darts from there and strangely enough it didn't need any darts at all and it fits really really well. So there's no darts in this which is a bit different to the pattern. So for this cord jacket I used an 11 well corduroy from Fabricland. The cotton facing on the yoke there is also from Fabricland as well. Now this was made using um, my own pattern. Uh, it has a, uh, a, an open zip which goes up the front and it's got two patch pockets here. And the patch pockets are also lined, I don't know whether you can see that, they're also lined with the red floral fabric as well. As it was the first jacket I made from my own pattern, I did make a 12 or a, maybe a mock-up uh, from an old bed sheet just to check the fit. And although I was relatively happy with the fit at the time I made the, uh, the mock-up, um, once I completed it, I wasn't too happy with these sleeves. I'll pop it onto the mannequin and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, let me show you what I mean. So. The shoulder here, uh, for, me, for my liking, that's too much of a drop shoulder. I prefer to have it a bit more fitted. I prefer to have it up on the shoulder head here. 
Um, so I've made an adjustment to the pattern to, to bring that in a bit. Also, for me, that's, that's a bit too low. Um, so again, in the uh, pattern adjustment, I've actually raised that up. Now to get around it on this garment, what I've done is I've added some shoulder pads and that has the effect of actually lifting that shoulder up a bit. So I'm much happier with that now than I was. And hopefully the um, new fitting will be reflected in the next jacket I make, which I'm gonna make uh, from this pattern again, uh, but maybe without the patch pockets, but with an open zip at the front. Well, after all those uh, complex makes, I decided to make a few easy, quick makes, such as t-shirts. So this is the first one I made. Um, it's a navy and white striped t-shirt. Uh, the fabric is a, a viscose jersey and it's from Fabricland. I made it using a free pattern um, from lovesewingmag.co.uk and it's easily downloadable uh, from their website. It doesn't come with any instructions, they expect you to buy the magazine, but if you're experienced at making up garments like this, then it shouldn't be any problem for you. I made it in uh, extra small and it fits really, really well. There are no uh, sizing charts or anything like that, so I would recommend that you dig out an existing t-shirt from your wardrobe and just uh, hold it up against the pattern, just check the fit of the pattern against your t-shirt and adjust if necessary. Obviously, if, it, if it's a jersey fabric, you need to take into account as well the, the uh, stretch in the fabric. I only made one adjustment to this pattern uh, the neckline, I cut the neckline to the existing pattern and started pinning it around the neckline and it was far too tight. Uh, if I carried on, it would have caused all this fabric to pucker, um, so I stopped and recut it. The way to measure what size neckband you need for your t-shirts is just to measure around um, the neckline uh, and take that measurement um, and then multiply that by 0.8 and that will give you the size of the band to cut for the neckline. Um, what I would recommend though is you just check uh, because depending on the stretch obviously you need it to go over your head so I would just check that that will stretch and go over your head before actually fitting it to your t-shirt. My only concern with this fabric is that I think the stripes are actually printed on rather than woven. If I stretch, I don't know whether you can see this in the camera, but if I stretch it, you might be able to see the white in between the stripes. Uh, it's not a problem. Uh, it's just that I'm not sure how well this fabric is going to wash and how it's going to wear. But having said that, it was a really cheap fabric anyway. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. And lastly, I made the t-shirt I've got on. Uh, it was using that free pattern from lovesewingmag.co.uk. Uh, I, I bought a meter, this is um, a cotton jersey and I bought a meter of it from Fabricland and I had enough to make this t-shirt and a very short <laughs> sleeveless t-shirt um, which is great. I actually made this t-shirt up in a small, size small um, and it was far too baggy around here around the waist. So I ended up unpicking the sleeves, unpicking the hemline and just taking it in from here. So the shoulders are slightly dropped 
they don't sit so well as the blue and white t-shirt but it's for a t-shirt it's not too bad so for the sleeveless t-shirt uh, not only did I have to cut the neckband but I had to cut the bands for the sleeves as well um, and for that I um, very much like I do with the neckline just measure around the outside of the sleeve hole and I think I multiplied it by 0.9 and I use that measurement then to cut the band. Um, having said that it's a little bit too baggy I think next time when I cut the band I'm going to cut it slightly tighter um, so that it's not so baggy around here but overall I'm really really pleased with all my t-shirts. Well, I hope you enjoyed going through my makes for January and February. If you did, please like and subscribe below. And until next time, bye.